Vishnu Vati Prade Devi Satya Vachai Namo Namaha Jai Tosi Maharani Right. All right. So we're going to be reading from Chaitanya Bhagwat. I hope that's all right. It's a continuation of our classes that we've been giving online whenever I have a chance. On the Chaitanya Bhagavad we're going through it. Uh, we're up to the 16th chapter of the Maja Kanda right now, which is a very interesting chapter. Of course, I always say that about every chapter. Every chapter is very interesting. Okay. So, it's good to see everybody. Bright and early in the morning. It's more than come to the temples, isn't it? Yeah. You get better morning program to see here. Do you want to connect it to the TV? What? The book. Am I connected? To I, I, can, I, I can't connect to the TV. Oh, I don't. I don't have the. I mean, I don't. I. I guess I should have brought my other computer down, but. Okay. That's no, fine. Do Does someone else have a computer? They can. Anyway. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll do it. Tomorrow. Okay. Let's just, today we'll just do it spontaneously, if that's all right. Yeah, tomorrow I'll bring my other computer down, and then I can connect that to the TV. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya His divine grace, Sabaya Chara. Now, the Bhaktivedanta goes, Sami. Shila Prabhupad Gijai, his gone founder, Acharya, Shila Prabhupad Gijai. Anantakoti, voice now, Vrinda Gijai, Yamacharya, Shila Vila, Stakur Gijai. Prem Se Kahu, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Rabunichananda Shidway, the Gadadhan. 
Shiva Siddhi Gaur Vakta Vrind Gajaya Shishi Radha Krishna Gopi Gopada Sanyama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Kijaya Vrindavanam Kijaya Maturadam Kijaya Jagadatha Sami Kijaya Yamunamai Kijaya Shimani Glass Devi Kijaya Samir Vakta Vrind Kijaya Gaur Premananda Hari Hari Gaur All Glorious He Sambal of Otis all glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is the assembled devotees. All glory is to Shri Guru and Gauranga, Shri the Bhopad Ki Jai. So, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Buddha Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Salmani Namani. Namaste Saraswati Devi. Gauravani Pacharani Nivasesha Srinivadi Pashyatya Dei Shitari. So, Om Magana. Samaradda Shah. Ganan Jana Shlakaya Chapsuru Militam Yena Kazmai Shigare Noha. So we are going to continue our reading of the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. And we're reading from chapter sixteen, which is the Lord's acceptance of Shuklambara's rice. But there's a lot of other things that happen in this particular chapter. We'll start with chapter text one. And we're just going to read the English so we can go quickly through this. In this way, Vishwambara constantly performs Sankirtan with the devotees in Navadweep. As they perform Kirtan at night, the Lord closed the door from inside so that outsiders could not enter. One day as the Lord was dancing in the house of Shivas, the famous story, the mother-in-law of Shivas was hiding within the house. No one, including Shivas Pandit, knew about this. She hid behind a basket of grains in a corner of the room. Hmm. Uh, let see, I'm skipping part of the purports here. As the super soul of all living entities, the Lord knows everything. Although he knows everything, he did not disclose this to enjoy his pastimes. As he danced, he repeatedly said, I'm not feeling any happiness. Is there anyone hiding here? They searched the entire house, and Shivas personally checked all the rooms. Hmm. When it was determined that no outsider was there, they continued the kirtan. Sri Sachananda, however, did not feel any ecstasy. Again, the Lord stopped and said, I'm not feeling happiness. Perhaps Krishna is not showing me mercy today. In fear, all the devotees thought, there was no one here besides us. We must have committed some offense. Therefore, the Lord is not feeling any pleasure. Shivas Pandit again went inside and found his mother-in-law hiding there. <laughs> his body was shaking because of the Lord's words. He gave instructions to grab her by the hair. <laughs> so you deal with your mother-in-law. <laughs> and throw her out. <laughs> When the Lord said, uh, uh, no one other than Shivas knew about this, then Vishwambar began to dance in ecstasy. When the Lord said, now I am feeling joyful at heart, Shivas Pandit smiled and joined the kirtan. So actually, there's several lessons from this. The lesson isn't that mother-in-laws are bad. <laughs> but first of all, we have to understand the scenario because we do well out in Harinam, and we do feel ecstasy when we go out in Harinam. Mm. So and there's plenty of people a lot worse than Shivas Thakur's mother-in-law in Harinam, isn't it? Yeah. So why was, were they discriminating against this poor old lady? Mm. The reason is that the kirtans in Shivas Angan were not just regular Hare Krishna kirtans. Mm. They were actually Leela kirtans. And they were getting into really depth about the gopis and other intimate aspects of Krishna consciousness. So what that teaches us is several different things. One, of course, is the uh, offense on chanting. One should not instruct the glories of the Lord to those who are faithless. So one should instruct the glories of the Lord according to someone's adhikar. Adhikar means the right that someone has. Someone may have the right to hear about the gopis, and someone may just have the right to hear about Brahman. Mm -hmm. 
So we find that amongst, you know, the group of devotees too. So therefore, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri, he wouldn't talk about the intimate exchanges of Radha and Krishna with anybody but, you know, three and a half associates. And I can describe half what it means, what it means. But so it's really important. So nowadays, of course, in ISKCON, you find so many books published about you know, Radharani and intimate exchanges and everything, and the, so many devotees reading the uh, Ujjala Nilamani mm. and other literatures like that. Of course, that uh, there was one of these mm, literatures, I think it was a Govinda Lilamrita, it was a Govinda Lilamrita, <coughs> that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur wanted to publish. And he went to his father to get permission, that's Bhakti Vinod Thakur, permission to publish. <coughs> and Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, no. So he kept going to his father, and his father eventually said, you can publish it, but only one copy for you to read. <laughs> There's also the saying in English, that fools rush in where angel, angels fear to tread. You ever hear that saying? Mm-hmm. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. So we have to be very, very careful. And we see in our movement, there's quite a bit of this Sahajism that's manifest now. Mm. You know, we're not sticking tightly, not everyone and not the majority of people, but people have to stick tightly to the way Prabhupada presented things Mm. and, you know, Lord Chaitanya's teachings, but not too much of this esoteric stuff for people. So anyway, so she was not qualified. Another point is when... uh, if you're discussing intimate exchanges before someone is not qualified, you will lose the ability to feel ecstasy. If you're act- even if you are qualified, even if you do have the adhikar. <coughs> so this is really what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing. Not that there was anything wrong with the mother-in-law, but she just didn't have the adhikar. And in general, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sri Thakur to keep people out of Sri Sangha unless they were pure devotees. They had a, I guess like in the bars, they have a bouncer. <laughs> so there is a, they had someone at the door <laughs> checking someone's card, you know, yeah. pure devotee card. You know. <laughs> Are you a pure devotee? No, get out of here. <laughs> but I'm chanting. I mean, there's other stories too. There was a Brahmin who Srivast Thakur thought was a pure devotee because he was just drinking milk, living by drinking milk. He thought, wow, it's really elevated. And then he was let in, and then Lord Chaitanya had the same response. Mm -hmm. And finally, they caught the Brahmin, and the Brahmin was getting ready to be thrown out, but he apologized, and then he became purified. So, you know, this is, is an extremely important point. And then, but in the public, we preach, you know, basic Krishna consciousness. You're not the body, you're a servant of God, God's name is Krishna, surrender to him. But Radharani, it's, it's such an esoteric, elevated subject matter that even Shukadeva Goswami wouldn't speak about Radharani and use her name directly in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's a really, really important point to understand. So this is... This is a lesson for us hmm. to adjust our preaching according to time, place, and circumstance. Okay, we'll continue. In the ecstasy of the tumultuous kirtan, the Vaishnavas laughed and fell to the ground. The lion like Lord Gorasundra danced in jubilation, and the most powerful Nichananda stretched his arms out to protect the Lord from falling. Who can see the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya? Only one who is favored by the Lord can see. In this way, Gorachandra daily performed kirtan hidden from the view of the general public. On another day, when the Lord did not feel happiness while dancing, he looked all around. Of course, this is the Brahman story. The Lord said, why am I not feeling happiness today? Have I offended anyone? Advaita Ch- oh, this was an Advaita Charya story. Advaita Chari was naturally a devotee of Lord Chaitanya. He had no desire other than the service of Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Vishwambar sat on the throne of Vishnu and placed his lotus feet on everyone's head, 
And when the Lord manifested his opulence, a dwaita floated in an ocean of happiness. Whenever the Lord said, O Nada, that's a dwaita charya's name, you are my servant, a dwaita became unlimitedly blissful. No one can understand the inconceivable truth about Goranga, who in the next moment would grab the feet of the Vaishnavas. <coughs> Taking his straw between his teeth, he would cry, Oh, dear Krishna, you are my life and soul. He cried in such a way that even stone would melt. The Lord constantly enjoyed his pastimes in the mood of a servant. So in other words, sometimes in Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya would vacillate, you know, vacillate, everyone understands that word, go, you know, go in between, for those of you who don't understand English, uh, vacillate between the mood of being a servant of Krishna and being Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's why, it's all right, there's a whole discussion, uh, can we put peacock feathers on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's crown? There's a whole discussion. And some devotees said, no, he's in the mood of Radharani. Oh, thank you for the garbage bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always wanted. Anyway, so, <laughs> as you could say, he's, uh, he's in the mood of Radharani, don't do it. Hmm. And other devotees knew the actual Siddhanta, that in Navadweep, he's like 50-50. Sometimes in the mood of Krishna, sometimes in the mood of Radharani. And uh, when he left Navadweep, took sannyas, then he was simply <coughs> in the mood of Srimati Radharani and Vipralamba, mm -hmm. an intense mood of separation. So this is, you know, it's important to understand that. So it's all right to put a peacock feather on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's crown. I don't know if you do that here at the temple, do you? Yeah. yeah. Prabhupada did it. So what's the harm? What's the harm? I know that certain... Anyway, I mean, if someone's in a different mood, it's all right, too. It's not, I'm not criticizing them. But if it's good enough for Prabhupada, it's good enough for me. Mm. So, mm. so when his mood as the Supreme Lord would break, he would speak to everyone as he did not know everything. If I ever engage in mischief then please inform me so that I can die immediately. <laughs> and of course, he was very mischievous. Mm. Christian is my life and wealth. Christian is my religious principle. All of you are my brothers and friends, birth after birth. I have no other goal than the service of Krishna. <coughs> Help me understand this so that my mind does not deviate. All the Vaishnavas felt hesitant to... Uh, out of fear. They had no courage to speak. In this way, when the Lord personally gave permission, then everyone could touch his feet. The Lord always remained in the mood of a servant. As soon as he would see a Vaishnava, he would respectfully stand up and take the dust from his feet. So it's interesting, you know, these different moods the Lord is showing. However, when the Lord... Uh, after he took sannyas, he didn't really want anyone touching his feet. You know, they were cleansing the Gundicha temple, and some Bengali Vaishnava actually washed his feet while they were cleansing the temple, and he started drinking the water, and Lord Chaitanya just kicked him out of the temple. He said to Sarup Damodar, you know, this Bengali Vaishnava has drunk my feet in the temple of the Lord. And the only time, there's the only time I can remember uh, when he when he actually allowed that was this devotee Kalidas, mm -hmm. because Kalidas had served the Vaishnavas. That's also another important lesson. Kalidas had served the Vaishnavas so nicely, and eaten the remnants of all the Vaishnavas in Navadweep. So he got the permission from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> to drink the foot bathing water when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was entering the uh, Jagannath temple. Mm -hmm. Hmm. As a result, all the Vaishnavas would feel distressed, therefore he would embrace them. The Lord always respected Advaita as his spiritual master. This made Advaita most unhappy. The lotus feet that Advaita constantly meditated on were now directly present, 
and that Waiter's desire was to always remain absorbed in them. He was unable to do so directly, however, for the Lord would become angry, yet he sometimes stole the dust from the Lord's lotus feet. Hmm. Whenever the Lord fell unconscious in ecstasy, a waiter approached his feet. He would then offer obeisances by falling flat at the Lord's feet and wash those feet with tears from his eyes. Sometimes he would rub his head on the Lord's feet. And sometimes he worshipped the Lord with six ingredients. Such activities were possible only for Adwaita because the Lord made him the great recipient of mercy. Therefore, Adwaita is the foremost of all. <coughs> all the Vaishnavas proclaimed, Adwaita is indeed glorious. Such are the extraordinary glories of the lion-like Adwaita. The miscreants, however, do not know this confidential truth. One day, as Lord Vishambara was dancing in ecstasy, Adwaita danced behind him. He secretly took the dust from the Lord's feet and smeared it on his body. Lord Goranga knows unlimited pranks. When he continued dancing, he felt no happiness. In other words, Lord Chaitanya was just acting. It's a prank. He was teasing. The Lord said, Why am I unable to capture the Lord in my heart? Who did I offend so that I am not feeling happy? Or has some thief stolen from me? <laughs> Is it because of that offense I am unable to dance? Has anyone taken the dust from my feet? Don't worry. Tell me the truth. When the devotees heard the words of the Lord who was present within everyone's heart, they did not say anything, but remained silent in fear. If they spoke, they would have to face the Dwaita. And if they didn't, they would be finished. You know, it's called a conflict. Uh, avoidance, avoidance, conflict. You can't do either one. <laughs> Understanding this, Adwaita replied with folded hands, Listen, my lord, if a thief cannot get something openly, then he should take it secretly. <laughs> <coughs> I have committed a theft. Please forgive me. I will not do it again if it displeases you. Vishwambar became greatly angry on hearing Adwaita's words. In anger, he began to narrate the glories of Adwaita. Even after annihilating the entire world, you were not satisfied. I alone remain after annihilation. When you annihilate me, then you will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> when you kill even the ascetics, sannyasis, yogis, and renowned philosophers, who can remain safe uh, from you, from your trident? If someone comes to achieve your favor, you grab his feet and kill him. A great Vaishnava from Mathura came to see your glorious feet. So he's talking about the glories of Advaita Jarya. He was supposed to achieve devotional service to Vishnu by seeing you, but you even destroyed whatever spiritual strength he had. You destroyed him by taking the dust from his feet. You are the most merciless in the act of destruction. Krishna has rightly endowed you with the devotion found in innumerable universes. The word upayoga means favorable. Oh, sorry. That's it. Yeah, that's the purport. Yet you steal from an insignificant source. You have no compassion when it comes to destroying an insignificant creature. You are a great bandit, and the greatest of all thieves, you have stolen my ecstatic love. As the Lord spoke in this way under some pretense, in this way, the devotees float in ecstasy. You have stolen. Why can't I? Wait and see how I will steal from a thief. Mm -hmm. After saying this, the Lord grabbed a dwaita and laughed as he took the dust from his feet. <laughs> That's really funny. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. A dwaita could not compete with the powerful lion-like Gora who rubbed a dwaita's feet on his head. Holding Adwaita's feet to his chest, the Lord said, See how I have captured the thief in my embrace. A thief may steal hundreds of hundreds of times, but a householder retrieves everything in one stroke. <laughs> That's funny. These are long verses. Adwaita said, Whatever you have said is true, but are you a householder? 
In, in fact, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at that time. I don't know anything about that. My life, intelligence, mind, and body all belong to you, O oh Lord. If you annihilate me, who can protect me? You are the giver of happiness, and you are the giver of distress. If you punish someone whose father can protect him. O oh Lord, when personalities like Narda visit Dwaraka to see your lotus feet, which are like their life and wealth, and you take the dust from their feet, what can they do? This is my question. When you destroy your own servant, what can he do? Please consider what to speak of taking dust from your feet. Who can even transgress your order? But when you act in this way, it does not increase your glories. As I get annihilated, you take pleasure. I mean, these are the interactions between Advaita Acharya and Lord Chaitanya. And of course, the lesson is that one has to observe etiquette. Advaita Acharya was far older, mm -hmm. but the Lord was actually transgressing etiquette. You know, when someone is far older, a senior Vaishnava, very, very senior Vaishnava, then you really have to follow that particular etiquette, even if you think you're more advanced than they are. You have to follow the etiquette. So, but later on, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in order to uh, fulfill Advaita Acharya's desire that uh, Lord Chaitanya would consider Advaita Acharya subservient to Lord Chaitanya, uh, Advaita Acharya uh, made a whole plan to teach some bogus philosophy so that Lord Chaitanya would come and beat him up. <laughs> That story is there also in this uh, Chaitanya Bhagavad. This body belongs to you. You may either pr protect or destroy it. O oh Lord, do what you wish. Vishwambar said, you are the storekeeper of devotional service. That is why I serve your lotus feet. If one smears the dust of your lotus feet over his body, he will float in the mellows of ecstatic love for Krishna. If you do not distribute devotional service, no one can attain it. Know that I belong to you in all respects. You can tell me wherever you like. You can sell me, sorry, wherever you like. I tell you this in truth. Hmm. This is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying to Dwayta Acharya, that I am your property. This is also in that lesson that we should be the property of, of advanced Vaishnavas. Because advanced Vaishnavas, they give us bhakti. Krishna say tomorrow, Krishna dite par. Bhakti comes from the Vaishnava. We mentioned this before. It doesn't come from Krishna. Therefore, according to the Acharyas, we are simply running behind them, shouting, Krishna, Krishna, give me devotional service. You know, when I would, used to walk with Prabhupada, I would just grab the dust from his feet in the sand, you know, of course, and eat it. <laughs> so one, you know, there's very powerful substances. There's the prasadam remnants, there's the foot bathing water, uh, and uh, what else is that? Yeah, foot bathing water, prasadam remnants, yes. and yes. dust from the feet. So any of those substances can give you pure devotional service. So I was very greedy. <laughs> You know, I ate everything on the plate, and Prabhupada's remnant plate. I would eat sand. I mean, how many people eat sand? <laughs> you know, I didn't get the foot bathing water. But during the Abhishek, you know, the Prabhupada's appearance or disappearance day, I do get that. So, on seeing the extraordinary mercy bestowed on Advaita, all the Vaishnavas were astonished. This great personality has truly served the Lord. For a fraction of the mercy he received cannot be compared to millions of liberations. Shiva rarely achieves such mercy as Advaita received from Lord Guranga. You are also, we are also fortunate to have the association of such a devotee. We take the dust from this devotee on our entire body. When such a devotee as Advaita Prabhu is joyfully glorified, sinful persons become distressed due to their past misdeeds. Hmm. The topics of that time have been narrated by the Vaishnavas and are all factual. One who doubts their words is ruined. Lord Vishwambar stood up and chanted, Hare Bol! His followers sang on all sides. 
Advaita Charya was overwhelmed with ecstasy and he forgot everything as he danced like an intoxicated person. Advaita Charya, the lord of Shantipur, touched his beard and roared loudly as he furrowed his eyebrows and danced. Hmm. Let me read the purport. This is really interesting. In accordance with scriptural injunctions, Sri Advaita Charya shaved his mustache, beard, and hair. Hair of any length on the chin is, in ordinary language, is called dadi or beard. That is, whew. you know, actually, so Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati has a different opinion here. It's interesting. He said actually he was clean shaven. To address him as Nada is an indication of his shaved head. So this was a controversy when we were installing the deities in Mayapur, whether it's Wait Charlie should have a beard and hair. And he does have a beard and hair, because that's what Prabhupada instructed. So I guess in different manifestations of Dwayta Charlie sometimes has a beard, sometimes has a hair. Uh it doesn't have a beard. And, and also we can understand that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Lakur was making this particular point because he didn't want people to have beards or long hair. And it's interesting, Prabhupada was very strong about this. Hopefully, let me just look around. <laughs> None of you ladies. <laughs> Robert was very strong about this. You know, he said, oh my God, if someone has a beard, he's not my disciple. <laughs> because he's against the principle. That was a specific quote by Prabhupada. Because the principle is the order of the guru. And so, you know, nowadays, if you want to be a famous kirtan leader, that's why I can never be a famous kirtan leader. <laughs> I mean, Prabhupada was so strong about this. And then, you know, people go to Prabhupada, went to Prabhupada, and they said, Prabhupada, there's a picture of you with a mustache. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, that's before I took initiation. <laughs> so we really have to do things in ISKCON the way Prabhupada did, if we want to have the spiritual potency to preach Christian consciousness, we can't. You know, there's certain instructions that Prabhupada gave that are incontrovertible. You can't violate those instructions. Other things, you know, there, there's some flexibility. Sometimes you can use a guitar in Kirtan. Prabhupada actually had that. There was one devotee who put out an, an album with a guitar. Uh, and English songs, his name was Mangalananda. Some of you have heard his songs. No? Actually, I, pre I prepared some of his songs while I'm here to chant. So anyway, one is, uh, Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising. You ever heard that song? We heard in your lecture. In your lectures. Oh, Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising, but it's not at all surprising. There's dancing in the street, telling everyone we meet we're going home. So, you know, there certain things you could do. That's because Prabhupada listened to him. He really liked the album. Mm -hmm. And other things like, you know, really strict instructions like 16 rounds, four regulator principles, like that standard of Vaishnava dress. Now, Prabhupada said, you know, Rahaste, you can have some little hair. A little hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not a gross. So it's okay. <laughs> I was just in Australia, there's one devotee, he looked like such a sight, by the way. You saw your photo, no? What, what? Your photo. You saw my photo? Oh, when I was young. Yeah. <laughs> That's before I took initiation. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked, I said, asked the devotee, please come up to me, I want to bless you, because it's feeling sad. <laughs> so, all right, so, so, you know, this, so you see this, like, you know, this is, sometimes the charyas have a little difference of opinion in these things. Mm. But we, we follow what our spiritual master founder, Acharya, said. And there's reasons for Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati speaking like this, because he was really against all these bogus sadhus with the long beards and everything. You have to understand the scenario in India at that particular time. Hmm. You know, he was preaching against, you know, the Mayavadis with the beards and the long hair and the Nagababas and everything. 
So day and night, they all happily sang, Jaya, Krishna, Gopal, Govinda, Vanamali, means the flute player. Hmm. Although Lord Nityananda was greatly overwhelmed, he was expert in dancing with Lord Chaitanya. Whenever Lord Chaitanya was about to fall, the most powerful Nityananda stretched out his arms and carefully caught him. Lord Goranga danced in, with unlimited ecstasy. Who has the power to describe that dancing? Balaram and Sarasati sing his glories to their full satisfaction. Sometimes the Lord lost consciousness. Sometimes his body shook. Sometimes he took straw between his teeth. And sometimes he became greatly proud. So these are, these are all symptoms of what's called vyabhachari bhavas. There's bhava means like an emotion. So there's 33 vyabhachari bhavas, and these are uncontrolled intermittent ecstasies. And they get so in, and intense ecstasies. And sometimes they get so intense that it appears like someone is dead. Like when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered the Jagannath temple for the first time, he fainted, and everyone thought the sannyasi has died. Mm -hmm. So they put a little cotton swab near his nose, and they could see there's a little bit of air going in and out. So this is, these are the ecstasies that devotees experience, pure devotees experience. Sometimes he laughed, sometimes he sighed deeply, and sometimes he became morose. In this way, the Lord manifested his ecstatic love. Sometimes the Lord sat in the Varasan posture, heroic. And sometimes he'd laugh loudly. As he bestowed mercy on everyone according to their good fortune, all the Vaishnavas drowned in an ocean of ecstasy. Seeing Shuklamba or Brahmachari standing before him, Lord Sri Gorahare bestowed his mercy on him. Now hear the topics regarding Shuklamba or Brahmachari he lived in Navadweep, where the Lord appeared. He was always engaged in his occupational duties, and he was most peaceful. Although no one knew it, he was a great devotee. He would take a bag on his shoulder and go beg alms from house to house in Navadweep. He would cry while chanting the names of Krishna day and night. People thought he was a beggar, and therefore they could not recognize him. He was so poor that he had to beg alms to maintain himself. Mm. Okay. After begging during the day, the Brahman offered whatever he received to Krishna and accepted his remnants. In the ecstasy of receiving Krishna's mercy, he did not know poverty. He would chant Krishna's names as he wandered from house to house. Who can recognize the recipient of Lord Chaitanya's mercy? Only one who is favored by the Lord is able. So sometimes, yeah, I was just speaking to someone the other day, and uh, they were telling me, well, the reason I'm not happy is I have to make this adjustment, I have to buy a new house, I have to have this, I have to have that. And I said, you got to go internal, Prabhu. Or probably, or Mataji, whatever it was. <laughs> uh, I mean, you got to have some internal life, you know, whatever Krishna sent you. Mm. You know, just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you can just, like, be looking for some material solution to your particular distress. Mm. You just sit down and get absorbed in Krishna's names. Everything is there in Krishna's names. But we think, you know, if, if we get this latest computer, or we get this a new house, or if we build a new temple, everything will be blissful. Mm. You know, or, or sometimes the people are thinking in the West, we'll get a new wife. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The happiness comes from within, from loving sentiment and devotion relationship with Krishna. Hmm. Shuklambara engaged in the devotional service of Vishnu just as the poor Damodar did previously. Vishwambara bestowed mercy on on him that he could remain of Shuklambara, yeah. Vishwambara bestowed mercy on him on that he could remain inside the house to watch the Lord dance. On hmm. seeing the Brahmin dance in ecstasy with his bag on the shoulder, the Lord and the Vaishnavas laughed. 
As Vishwambara sat down in the mood of the Supreme Lord, Shuklambara danced, cried, and laughed with his bag on the shoulder. While watching Shuklambara, the most merciful Garanga repeatedly called out to him, Come, come! You are my poor servant, birth after birth. You give me everything and remain a beggar. I always desire your foodstuffs. Even if you don't give me, I forcibly take and eat them. <laughs> hmm. Did you forget that I forcibly ate your broken rice in Dwarka? Mm -hmm. Kamala, the goddess of fortune, caught hold of my hand. Hmm. After speaking in this way, Vishwambara took a handful of cooked rice. Of course, that's Sudama Brahma that's mm -hmm. being referred to here. Handful of uncooked rice from Shuklambara's begging bag and began eating it. Shuklambara exclaimed, Oh Lord, you have ruined me. This rice is full of broken particles. The Lord replied, I eat your broken rice, and I turn my face away from the nectar offered by non-devotees. <laughs> also, another point is that we should always, like what Prabhupada made, that we should always eat food cooked by devotees. And we should be careful who is cooking for us, making sure they're on the highest devotional standard. We shouldn't use hired cooks. Like that in, in Australia, in uh, Sydney, uh, they were doing all these programs, and I said, "Look, who's cooking during the programs?" And uh, they said, "Well, we have to pay someone to do it." And I said, "Do you think you're distributing prasadam? No, mm. you're giving people boga." Mm. Uh, okay. So, all right. The Lord, who was independent, full of ecstasy, and the life of the devotees, ate that uncooked rice. Who could stop him? On seeing the Lord's compassion, all the devotees began to cry while holding their heads. No one knew who fell where at who fell where as they cried. Everyone was overwhelmed on seeing such compassion. They then began to chant the glories of Krishna in great ecstasy. Everyone cried from the children on up to the ages. Aged. Someone held straw between his teeth. Someone offered obeisances, and another said, O oh Lord, never leave me. Can you imagine the, you know, the extent of the ecstasies that were exchanged between the devotees there? And the love the devotees had for each other. You know, there's two things. The love the devotees had for Krishna and the ecstasy they were experiencing, and just the love they had for each other. Shh. I mean, that's why you couldn't bring an outsider into such a situation like that. Mm. It's just too intimate. It's like a family. Mm. The pious Shuklambara rolled on the ground as the Lord of Aikuntha happily ate the rice. The Lord said, Listen, Shuklambara Brahmachari, I constantly enjoy pastimes in your heart. Mm. When you eat, I eat. When you walk about for begging, that is my walking. I've incarnated to distribute prema bhakti. You are my beloved servant birth after birth. Hmm. On hearing this benediction, I now give you Prema Bhakti, know for certain that Prema Bhakti is my life and soul. On hearing this benediction, Shuklambara received all the, all the Vaishnavas chanted, Jaya, Jaya, Hari, Hari. The servant of Lakshmi's Lord begs from door to door, what fortunate soul can understand the mystery of such a pastime? Whatever ice Shuklambara collected by begging at ten houses was forcibly eaten by Gora Chandra the husband of Lakshmi. So maybe we will end here today and take questions. Anybody have any questions? Questions, comments? Thank you, Shabbat. Yeah. Um, you know, um, thank you very much for the wonderful class thank you. once again. Taking notes, that's yes. pretty good. <laughs> Maharaj, um, you know, you mentioned that, um, well, we know that Lord Chaitanya appeared to give love of God here. Yeah. But at the same time, as we discussed, some of the kirtans and everything were confidential. Right. But giving lo the love of Godhead is also confidential, you know, in one sense, like spreading the Lord's holy names and distributing yeah. the love of God. So that was his mission in, in, in any case. So why not just give love of Godhead to everyone that wants to enter into the kirtan? Uh... When it's described that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave love of Godhead to everybody, 
in many cases that meant starting their <coughs> devotional service. Just like we're representing, you know, Prabhupada is pure representative of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you know that verse from the Chaitanya Char- Charitamrita, Brahmanda Brahmate Kondha Valgirwan Jiva Guru Krishna Prasadi Vali Bhakti Lata Bish, that the soul is wandering from one universe to another or, or around the universe. And by the mercy of Krishna, one comes in contact with the Guru and gets this Bhakti Lata Bish. So this Bhakti Lata Bish is the, it's a seed of the creeper of devotion. It's not actually the creeper of devotion, it's actually the seed of the creeper of devotion. And then it has to be cultivated. So devotional service or pure devotional service has to be explained to someone according to their particular ability to understand. Just like you could say, all right, okay. Yeah. So I went to the university in my own personal life and I studied nuclear energy at the university. <laughs> So, if I start talking about it right now, <laughs> you know, I think it'll go above it, just about everyone's head. You know, how to, how to develop, how to build an atom bomb. Maybe some of you would be interested. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, it would go, you know, it's just, it's, it's above their ability to understand. And what is it? Too much knowledge is a dangerous thing in the hands. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, another point is Upadeshu Himorkanam Prakapaya Nashantaye, that if you give a fool good instruction, it just makes them angry. Yeah, I mean, so there's all these different considerations. And if you talk about two intimate things, it, people may either get angry, people may be incredulous, you know, they lose faith. Yeah, so. so like if you, you know, if you go out in public, let's say if I was giving a public lecture and talking about Krishna kissing the gopis, <laughs> they'd be committing offenses, or they become sahajas. So, love of God doesn't mean uh, that one has to understand the Lord's intimate pastimes in Vrindavan. That's the perfection of love of God. Mm. But there's different stages uh in the progressive path of devotional service. So we want to give people love of God according, again, according to their adhikar ability to understand. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood that. I mean, like, like Jagad and Madai, they could basically understand either they chant Hare Krishna or they're going to get killed by the Sudarshan Chakra. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was their level. And uh, there's no indication that they actually understood or heard about the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And, you know, it's just, the holy name is everything. And you can't, and also Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave everybody the holy name. So there's nothing lacking in the chanting of the holy name. It's not that people were lacking something because they didn't see these intimate loving exchanges uh, between the Lord and his eternal associates. Uh, because Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigra, everything is there in the holy name. So it's not that they were uh, bereft of anything, but they were given Krishna consciousness or pure love of God or started in the process of pure love of God in a way that was appropriate for them. You know, just, I mean, who knows what Shivas Thakur's mother in law's consciousness was like? <coughs> you know, she would. She might have just been curious, and then, you know, let's see, let's see what my son-in-law is into. <laughs> I mean, I don't know specifically what she, what her consciousness was like, but still, it's a very important principle to give Krishna consciousness. If we want to get pure love of God, we have to give it according to time, place, and circumstance. You know, we certainly don't speak about the gopis publicly, although many devotees do. You know, we've developed a whole class of sahajas in our society and people who take things cheaply mm-hmm. because of uh, not understanding, you know, not understanding what level we're at in devotional service. So, other questions? Yes. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, this continuation of the same question. Yeah. Uh, one thing happened with the Lord Nityananda as well when he did not get any accommodation and he became very angry. And he kicked. Yeah. So 
how we can take in this. That's mercy. <laughs> I would love to get kicked by Lord Mitchell. <laughs> Not cursed, but kicked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Lord Nichinan is always giving out mercy. I mean, even if if one <coughs> <coughs> if one has to suffer because of some offense, that's actually purification too. Hmm. Uh, who is that? Who is that Zamandar? Who? Let's try to remember the story. He was the one who offended Haridas Thakur and then also offended Lord Nishinanda later on. What was his name again? Anyway, landholder. Ramchandra Khan. Ramchandra Khan had offended Haridas Thakur because he was the one who sent the prostitute. Hmm. Later on, Lord Nishinanda came and he wanted to stay, you know, in his house and then Ramchandra Khan said, just find a cow shed somewhere. And then Lord Nichinanda said, your house is only fit for meat eaters. Mm -hmm. And he cur basically cursed them. Then later on, the uh, Nawab came, or the Muslim governor came, and he actually cooked cow flesh right in the Durga Mandap outside of the house. So that's actually also in the mercy of Lord Nichinanda. But it's not sort of the sort of mercy I want to get. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your wonderful class. I'm sorry for being late. That's fine. Um, you're forgiven. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was at the temple, if that helps. No, that's all right. That helps. <laughs> that helps. Anyway, it's um, a good excuse. You get, next time, you just get a written read. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm so, just joking. <laughs> so you stress the importance of Vaishnav etiquette. Yeah. Um, so I notice sometimes... Um, I don't know why, but I will be more give more etiquette at the temple. But when I'm out doing outreach or something, um, I'm less inclined to give proper etiquette. And and when I'm not at the temple, I was wondering, is that not proper? You're less inclined. Yeah, I don't, I kind of like I give it sometimes, and then sometimes I don't give the etiquette. I'm wondering what's wrong with me. I don't think anything's <laughs> wrong with you. I think it's. You know, generally in the society of devotees, we're all friends. You know, I think, I think if we get too much into hierarchy, mm. it actually destroys relationships. There's a, there's a modicum or a medium okay. way of observing hierarchy. You know, I mean, I mean, I know when I deal with the devotees, I, even if I'm dealing with a very junior devotee and, or a disciple, sometimes I get really friendly. And then they have to reciprocate with me on a friendly basis. So, you know, it, it just, the mood changes in informal dealings. Okay. So what you're, what you're saying is actually a natural occurrence. At the same time, we should remember in our mind that we're dealing with a, a superior or a more advanced Vaishnava or spiritual master. Mm. But sometimes, I mean, sometimes... I may tease a disciple expecting, you know, just like a funny response from them. So it depends on the relationship. Uh, okay. It really depends on the relationship. I wouldn't worry too much about it, as long as you don't offend anybody. How will I know? If How I do you know? If I someone? Uh, <laughs> you may see Yamaraj. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll show you a picture. I mean, Yamaraj came to me the other day. I, I'll show you a picture of Yamaraj. I mean, this is serious stuff. You know, he does, he really exists. <laughs> you want to see him? If you want to show me, I will. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I'll just got to pull up his picture here. I just think, you know, I pulled my phone out when he came. And he posed. What? No, he's a, he's my friend. <laughs> Who's next on the list? <laughs> Wait, is next on the list? No, he. <laughs> He takes care of my disciples and don't listen to me. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, here it is. Hold on a second. 
Just give me one second. It's right over here. I heard he's black and scared. Yeah, you'll, you'll see what he looks like in a second. Here he is. Here's a full body picture. <laughs> and here's, here's a... Here's his face. <laughs> That's pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I ask him to take care of disciples from time to time. <laughs> he's actually from Fiji. <laughs> Is he the witch doctor? No, he's a, Some of you may even know him. His, his name is Keshwand. Yeah, oh. Keshwand. He's, he, I, so, basically, for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, they, we, we have different dram dramas, mm -hmm. and he played the part of Yamaraj for the Jagai and Madai story. <laughs> we actually have professional dramas put on. We have a whole troupe, a drama troupe, with a stage and professional lights and everything like that for all the festivals. And Fiji? No, this is in North Carolina in the United States. Yeah. He's really, yeah, he's really good. <laughs> so just better be careful. <laughs> okay, any other questions? We're going to have to end in a second. If not, we'll end class and we'll continue tomorrow with a series of classes on the chat. Are there any appearance or disappearance days this week? Or? No. Govinda Ghosh. She's one of the singers. There were three brothers, Madhava Ghosh, Govinda Ghosh. Like that's that. today. Oh, that's today. Oh, that's today. All right. But he was one of the singers, eternal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, three brothers who used to sing with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So, on that happy note, thank you very much. All glory is to His Divine Grace, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Jai.